Okay, wrapping up chapter 15, talking specifically about cell membranes, which are very important to keep all the stuff where it's supposed to be. So substances are transported across that cell membrane by either diffusion, facilitated transport, or active transport. And so we get to learn the composition and function of the lipid bilayer as well as the cell membranes. Okay, so diffusion is passive transport, facilitated where a channel is formed by a membrane protein and then after transport where you actually have to actively use energy to transport those guys across the membrane, okay? So the cell membrane is very important and it separates the cellular contents from the external environment. And it consists of a lipid bilayer, which is made of two rows of phospholipids. We have an inner portion that's made of the nonpolar tails of phospholipids along with the polar heads on the outer and inner surfaces. So looking at this, you can see that the phospholipid um, bilayer, as well as cholesterol, those come together to make what we call the fluid mosaic model. And this just means that the cell membrane is not rigid. It has kind of a whooshy, oceany kind of thing. So the fluid mosaic model of the cell membrane is where the proteins and cholesterols are embedded in a lipid bilayer of phospholipids. And these bilayers form a membrane type barrier with the polar heads at the membrane surfaces and the nonpolar tails in the center away from the water. Now, I use bilayer as a trigger word. Okay, so you can see here that the bilayer actually means that there's two layers of phospholipids that come together to make that cell membrane. But if you look at the structure of a phospholipid, it has the polar uh, phosphate head and then it has two fatty acid tails. So two means bi, right? So a phospholipid bilayer, think of two, it's gonna be the one that has the phosphate head with two legs, okay, or the two fatty acids. So you can use that as a double trigger word, okay? The lipid bilayer, <clears throat> this contains proteins, carbohydrates, and cholesterol, and it has unsaturated fatty acids that make the cell membranes fluid-like rather than rigid, that fluid mosaic ocean mo movement, okay? And it also has proteins and carbohydrates on the surface that communicate with hormones and neurotransmitters. And that's the coolest thing about your body is it's constantly communicating with all different parts of your body. So looking at those uh, forms of transfusion or transport, okay, we have um, the passive. Passive is passive aggressive. I'm not really trying, you know, whatever. So that's where we're going to move particles from a higher to lower concentration. And this is just happens by nature, right? where the facilitated transport, this is gonna have a helper to facilitate, okay? So facilitation is usually a helper. So this is gonna use protein channels to increase that rate of diffusion. Where active transport, we're actively doing something. And so we're gonna be using energy to help move ions against a concentration gradient. So usually passive or diffusion, passive transport, that's down like the concentration gradient. So it's just, like I said, just natural. But if we have to move it against the concentration gradient, then we're going to use some energy. And again, that's active transport. So again, I talked about that phospholipid bilayer. And again, it's because there are two layers of phospholipids. But if you look really closely, you can see again that the phospholipid has two tails. So that's where your trigger, trigger word comes in. So um, substances are transported across the cell membrane by diffusion, either passive, facilitated, or active. And here are examples of everything that we just talked about. Okay, so let's do a final study check. So the transport of particles across the cell membrane from high concentration to low concentration is called what? Pause me and come back. So remember, when it's going from high to low, that's just normal gravity kind of thing. So that one would be B or diffusion. Okay, so great job, you guys. And here is your concept map for lipids. So for the lipids, we have fatty acids and we have steroid nucleus. Okay, so the steroid nucleus is in that cholesterol, the bile salts, and the steroid hormones. For the fatty acids, we have triglycerides, prostaglandins, and waxes, and phospholipids. And under triglycerides, we have our fats and oils, saturated and unsaturated, depending on if they have a double bond, et cetera. And phospholipids, you have your two different layers, et cetera. So great job today, you guys.